so I thought it is about time to talk about carbon plated super shoes. Welcome to the track house. We're gonna kick this one off with the Hoka Cielo. Cielo, Cielo. We're gonna kick this one off with the Hoka Cielo X1. Let's talk super shoes. What do you think of these? So you can see that I've already worn these at least a little bit. And the nice thing about these super shoes is they've started showing the carbon. You can see the carbon fiber in the bottom of the sole, which I think is very cool. So let's get into the nitty gritty of what makes this such a hardcore super shoe. This is the Cielo, which is Spanish for sky. I had to look that up. Look at the profile of it though. Super interesting super shoe. I think the first thing that jumps out at me, if we forget about the styling, is the curve on the front end of the shoe is almost kind of matched by having a curve at the rear end of the shoe. And Hoka have typically referred to this as a, what do they call it? Rocker. Hoka has typically referred to this as a rocker. So you get that front place rocker, but they've actually rounded off the heel as well. So we will jump on the treadmill and I'll give you a running example of what these are like. Some stats, simple stats, 260 or 250, 260 pounds, British pounds. You get the midsole, which is the foam in the middle. That's double layered and the carbon fiber sits in the middle and they call it a winged carbon fiber. I think it just like spreads out a bit wider in the front end of the shoe. Knit upper and all the kind of usual super shoe kind of stuff that keeps the weight down on that. These are 264 grams and for a big pair of you know, elite level 10K through to marathon distance, super shoe, carbon fiber, you know, that is a good weight. I was really keen to test these out. I really, I've been, I have been, I have been really keen to test these out purely from the way that they look. The stack height is 29, 39 mil at the front, 32. Let me start that again. The stack height is 39 at the heel. I think it's like 32 in the midfoot. It does vary because it's a, you know, you can literally see the amount of foam, midsole foam. I'm gonna whack these on, jump on the treadmill. I'm gonna give you a little rundown whilst I'm moving in them. So I can just give you a bit more feedback in how they feel. Let's do it. Before we get into all this, let's just talk super shoes for a second. How good is my treadmill setup? I absolutely love it. This is a bit unnecessary, but adds to the vibe, gets me out here, encourages me to do it. And again, that's why I like it. So what is a carbon plated super shoe and why do you need one? Or do you need one? So the principle is pretty simple. A shoe or a carbon plated shoe, super shoe, a carbon plated super shoe is designed to reduce the impact from running hard and fast, but provide you the most energy return. Ultimately, if you were to try and reduce impact full stop, you just run barefoot on a beach because the sand will absorb all of that impact, but also absorbs a lot of your energy when you're trying to push off, which is why it's harder to run on a beach. So a super shoe, a super shoe has the difficult task of softening the impact, but also returning the energy. So it's kind of like running on a beach in terms of impact, but trying to provide that springboard when you're actually stepping off. And this is what happens when you have that nice big midsole, that thick layer of midsole and the carbon plate in the middle. So the midsole absorbs and the way that the shoe is designed, especially the Cielo with that rolling rocker off the front of the shoe, stops that real sharp impact point. And it's the same with the heel of the shoe. Now that I'm walking in it, it doesn't necessarily feel super stable because you get the effect of that soft foam. It's rolling side to side a little bit, which I guess doesn't really matter when you're walking. It's more important to how does it feel when you are running and you, when you are walking in it, you can feel that, that foam just absorbing the impact 
and that is gonna effectively, if you are running fast, reduce the impact and the stress that goes through your muscle. So you should be able to run a little bit faster for a little bit longer. And this is where that kind of three, four percent saving on wearing a super shoe or improvement comes in. So, you know, they say three, four percent when you wear a super shoe, which I guess you can't really argue with that. And then the carbon plate is for that springboard. So the carbon gets loaded when you start rolling through from the midfoot to the toe for your toe off and then it will kind of snap you forward. And that's the concept. So you combine that really soft foam with that carbon fiber plate. And then voila, you have a super shoe. The problem is though, is that the soft foam doesn't tend to last, but we don't have to worry about that just yet because this is a new pair of shoes and we're gonna give it a little test run now. So let's get up to speed. So now that we're at a slow conversational-ish jogging pace, I can already feel that the midsole, which is what I'm aiming to land on, becomes so much more uh, sturdy or steady because you're not relying on that soft foam midsole to secure your foot for a longer period of time. The faster you run, you reduce that contact time. And so you're relying less or the foot is less able to really kind of wobble over on that soft foam. And the Cielo X1 actually has less foam in the front forefoot than it does in the rear. So effectively, if you are a midfoot striker and everyone will roll off the big toe, that's how we run, you are rolling off the bit that has slightly less foam. Um, and in theory, with the winged carbon fiber plate, has more carbon fiber. So that's effectively what makes this such a great running shoe. So if you go from walking to what we are doing now, which is, you know, a reasonable jog, just, you know, like a nine and a half minute mile. What's that in Ks? Five and a half, I think. Five and a half K, minute Ks. Five and a half minute Ks. And I'm now landing on the forefoot which is how I try and do it in a race, at least for the start. So when you start landing on the heel, you get that plusher, fuller, there's more midsole at the back of the shoe. I think it was 38 mil. So you do get that little bit of temptation to roll a little bit. But if you're landing on the heel and you're heel striking, the way that the shoe is designed, you don't get a sudden sharp impact because it forces you to roll through. Bear in mind, I'm only jogging at the moment. This should be something that should be emphasized and should be even more of a benefit when you run quicker. So this is also a neutral shoe, which basically means you don't get a huge amount of support in it. I like to put a little insole into all my shoes just to encourage a little bit more mid-arch support. It's not like a full insole, a little bit mid-arch. I do like to pronate, nothing wrong with pronation. You might be able to hear it, can you hear that? So, heel striking. And then we're gonna go mid-strike. And you might be able to hear there's less noise. So you heel strike, your contact time is probably a bit longer. Contact force might be a bit harder. And that's what a shoe like this is reducing. And when you're mid striking or forefoot striking, you're landing in the middle of the foot, rolling off the big toe. And that's when these things, these carbon shoes with these soft foam come into their own. We're gonna ramp it up a little bit. Let's get it going. Can you hear how squeaky my treadmill is? I love this treadmill though. Will not have a bad word said against it. So now that we're running faster, landing in the midsole, I'm gonna slow it down just so I can tell you this bit. Now that when we get up to speed, 
and we run quicker and you land on that midsole, midfoot, forefoot, you just roll through really nicely. And the idea is that that carbon plate, the winged carbon plate, just propels you forward and you get the soft cushioning of the foam. And that foam isn't just like, the goal of the foam is not to be completely soft and just squishy. It has to have some energy return to it as well. And you combine the two. But as I'm walking now, you can feel the height of that midsole and you can feel how the stability of the shoe changes when you are at a low speed compared to a high speed. Obviously, aim of the game when you are out running your 10K, 5K, half marathon marathons is to be running at a higher speed. And I can 100% see why a shoe like this is gonna help you do that. So the Cielo X1, uh, from my point of view, I managed to run, I did a 10K in it. I did the London Winter Runs 10K. And while it wasn't a PB, from the state of like how I've had to come back from an injury, managed to get to the point where I ran, well, a PB for the last three or four years. Um, so it definitely did play its little role in my own little journey. So as I said, that heel has a lot of cushioning in it. I think it's like 38 mil, and I think it's 32.5 in the front. There's a 7.5 mil drop between the back of this shoe and the front. So you get way more cushioning in the heel combined with that rolling nature of the heel, this is, you know, a really, I don't want to say forgiving, but it allows you to land and roll all the way through just using the simple physics of not having a flat shaped heel um, and also having that rocker on the front of the shoe. So it's two thumbs up from me. I think it's a, like it's a really good, well, it's a really good fast shoe. And I think it's nice to see how competitive the carbon fibered, carbon fibered? It's nice to see how competitive the carbon fiber plated shoe, super shoe market is at the moment. So we're gonna leave this one here. In terms of styling, it's not something I've covered. I'm gonna leave that completely up to you guys. But hopefully I have given you some idea of what it's like to run in this. Um, and from my perspective, I really like it. I find it really comfortable. My foot fits in it uh, really well. So I've got a fairly reasonably normal shaped foot. Um, no issues in terms of like the heel cage. There is enough width up front for my foot to fit into it and, and spread out. So it doesn't come up uh, narrow in terms of like a lot of super shoes or fast marathon shoes would just, you know, they'd be like super small, thin soles and super narrow front of the shoe. This comes up like a normal wearing shoe that has all the characteristics of what is going to make you super quick. So that's a wrap from the track house, guys. Thanks for sticking around. Like, subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.